Hi, Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this video, I would like to share how to write a MATLAB program to construct the cubic spines interpolation algorithm. For illustration, a set of data is chosen that will be presented shortly. So let's begin with the programming. First, let's create a new script or the M file and name it as um, cubic spline. And let's launch this, this file. So I often begin the program with clearing the workspace and command window that is by typing clear and CLC. Okay, now for illustration, this set of data is used where the independence variable is t. So let's type t equals to 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So t probably the time and the dependence variable is y. Let's say y equals to 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and 0. And y can be any physical quantity like the distance, density, or voltage. Alright, first let denote the number of data points as the big N, such that N equals to length of T. So the big N is, the big N denotes the number of points, or number of the size of the data. And from the spline formulation, we know that the number of sub-intervals is less than the number of points by 1. So let's denote the number of sub-interval with small n, which is equal to big N minus 1. So this small n represents the number of sub-intervals. All right, next, uh, since we assume that the sub-intervals have equidistance spacing, so we can write the step size h equals to the last t, which is t small n, minus the first t, which is t1, divided by the number of sub-intervals, which is the small n, sorry, this must be the big N. So this is the step size. Okay, now let, let us check the formula. All right. First, we need to calculate the second order derivatives at each point that we denote as sigma, which is sigma 1, sigma 2, 3, 4, until sigma n plus 1. Assuming that the nat natural splines is used, we know that the second order derivatives at the end points are 0, that is sigma 1 equals to 0 and sigma n plus 1 equals to 0. So small n plus 1 equals to big N, so this is uh, the value of the second derivative at the final point. So the, the remaining second order derivatives in which at the middle points, starting from sigma 2 until sigma small n, can be computed using this relationship in matrix form. Prior to that, we need to construct this tri-diagonal matrix 
Note that the blank spaces in this matrix are filled with zeros. Uh, in MATLAB, each diagonal has its own number. The middle diagonal is diagonal number zero. The first diagonal above the middle diagonal is diagonal number one. And the first diagonal below the middle diagonal is diagonal number negative one. So let's open this command window and have a try on how the diagonal command works. First, let's try typing A equals to DIAG, which stands for diagonal. Uh, round braces, so inside these round braces, we write this three number, for example, one, two, and three, and hit the enter. So we get a diagonal matrix that contains the uh, diagonal that we have specified in these braces. All right, what happened if we rewrite this, but we followed with comma one? So this number indicates what is the position of this diagonal supposed to be. So when we write comma one, meaning that we want these uh, numbers located at diagonal number one. So diagonal number one is the diagonal above the middle diagonal. If we rewrite and write uh, and change the number one with negative one and hit the enter, we will get this diagonal located below the middle diagonal. So this is how um, the number of diagonal works. And secondly, uh, since the middle diagonal must be filled with number four, we can write four times once, matrix once, um, one comma, for example, three. So we will get a row matrix. All of them are number four. And the dimension is a single row and three columns. All right, now back to our script. We can um, construct our tridiagonal matrix with, for example, TRID, name it with TRID, equals to diagonal four times once, one comma small and minus one okay plus diagonal once because uh, diagonal number one contains number one and the length is less than one of the middle diagonal so n one comma n minus two and this must be located at above the middle diagonals, comma one. And plus again, the diagonal below the middle diagonal, which is similar with this one, but the number of the diagonal is negative one. All right, so uh, let's check the common window what we have what we have at this point so we can run our program and check the common window now we have this tridiagonal matrix all right so let's continue with the program after having this tridiagonal matrix um, we we need to build the the matrix or vector on the right hand side of these equations. So this formula 6 over h square um, times these terms 
So we can we can uh, make each elements in this uh, matrix with a general form. All right. So let's use the for loop. Now for i equals to sorry i equals to one until n minus one. Let us name this vector or this matrix as each element of them as z, z i equals to six over h square times. So since we begin i equals to one, so this is supposed to be i i plus one and i plus two. So we need to have y i plus two minus 2 times y i plus 1 plus y i. And we end our um, for loop. All right, now we can find this sigma vector by, by inverting the tri-diagonal matrix and multiplying it with this zec matrix but we need to be careful because um, uh, when constructing our zec so let's check what we have until this point we run our script and we check our workspace so now we have the zec that is um, a row matrix so in order to find This sigma matrix, we need to transpose z first. So let's write z equals to z transpose. And then we can find this matrix or this vector by inverting this tri diagonal matrix and multiply with vector z. So let's call this as w, which stands for this vector, equals to the inverse of the tri diagonal matrix times vector z. Okay, the second thing is we have to remember that this sigma vector begins with sigma 2, not sigma 1. So since sigma 1 and sigma n plus 1 equals to 0, so after finding this w, we need to add the value of 0 at the first and the last elements of w such that sigma equals to 0, w, and then 0. And let's run our program until this point and check the command window. So we have this. This is our W and this is the Sigma. And write back the uh, semicolon. Okay, now we can find the coefficients of D, B, A and C. So in fact, D, I can be found at the first place because di does not depend on sigma. di is simply equals to yi. By the way, we can write all the formulas for d, b, a, and c in, a, in the same for loop. Such that for i equals to 1 until small n, di equals to yi bi equals to sigma i over 2 ai equals to sigma i plus 1 
minus sigma i divide by 6 times h. <coughs> and finally, ci equals to y i plus 1 minus y i divided by h minus h over 6 times 2 times sigma i plus sigma i plus 1. And end the for loop. All right. At this present time, we already have all the values of the coefficients a, b, c, and d. Meaning that all cubic expressions for the whole spline have been defined. Therefore, the interpolation between two consecutive points can be done. All right. Suppose that we want to split h sub intervals further with four sub-intervals, meaning that we require another three points in between the two consecutive points. Let the number of sub-sub-intervals equals to four. So this one is the number of sub-sub-intervals since we are going to perform the interpolations. And the size of the sub-sub-intervals, let's denote it as HH, equals to H over R. So this one is the size, the step size of the sub-sub-interval. <coughs> Alright, for the raw data, the values for points T is... T 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. Here, let us use another symbols, for example, x, to denote the time with the new sub-interval size. So let x equals to T1 with step size hh hish until T big N. Both x and t are in fact referred to the same variable, which is the time. The difference is x has more points because it corresponds to the smaller sub-intervals. Let's have a check on the vector of t and x. By running this script up to this point and calling the t and x in the command window, So let's write T um, transpose. So we have this. By the way, the X transpose is also from 0 to 20. But this time, it has more points because the sub-intervals is smaller than the sub-intervals for T. What do we have in the raw data is these points. T and Y. So in the, in the raw data, we have these points. But now, the time, the time table, the time variable, which is X, has small points, meaning that we require the value of Y at X. 1, 2, 3, and then 5, 6, 7, and then 9, 10, 11, and so on using the interpolations. However, bear in mind that the interpolation values of y for the time x, 1, 2, 3 must be found using the first spline. The interpolation values of y for the time x or t, 5, 6, 7 must be found using the second spline and so on. Meaning that if I write in this manner, 
for i equals to 1 until n and another for loop for j equals to r times i minus 1 plus 1 until r times i s j equals to a i times x j minus t i power 3 plus b i times x j minus t i power 2 plus c i times x j minus t i and plus d i n and n again if i write in this manner so let's take when i equals to 1 my j is from 1 until r which is number 4 so if i repeat if i equals to 1 my j is 1 until 4 if my i when my i equals to 2 j is from 5 to 8 when i equals to 3 j is from 9 to 12 and so on so in this you in this manner we can realize what uh, I've been explained previously however if we run until this point and check our workspace we figure out that the length of s in here is only 20 to make the length of s equals to the length of x which is 21 we need to add one more point that is s r times n plus 1 equals to y n meaning that the spline the value of the spline at the final points equals to the value of the final data so if we run until these points we get our x and s has the same le same length meaning that if i write x transpose s as transpose and hit enter i get the set of data with interpolated values at the time 1, 2, 3, and then 5, 6, 7, and so on. Okay, now let's plot the original or the raw data. So let's indicate the raw data with circle for example so this can be done by writing plot t comma y comma o so this will produce if we run until this point we will get the plot of the raw data um, y versus t so we have the point 0 0.7 0 0.9 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and 0. Okay, now let's plot the interpolated data on the same axis using another symbol. For example, this time we want to use cross. First, we have to write hold on so that MATLAB will plot on the same axis. Plot x, s, and we use cross symbol which is x in MATLAB and then we write hold off so if we run until these points 
we get this graph that show the raw data, the value, the points of the raw data and the interpolated data. Um, to make this like uh, connecting lines between the interpolated points, we can modify this a little bit by putting a dash before this cross symbol. So if we, run, we rerun the program, we will get this curve. Okay, so that's all for now. Thanks for watching.